it's okay for me to tell you, and it's fine for you to know that we have inherited a very difficult situation. Literally a bankrupt country. No money. To again uh, reflect very severely and quietly in my own time to behave myself. Nobody can prove a case against me. How can there be a Ghanishi order against us? 800 million US dollars? How do, you, how do you suffer from it? The judiciary is not even helping matters. Look at the kind of judgments that we have today. So who will now have confidence in judiciary again in this country? Election petition is over. Now nobody's afraid of presidents or ex-president general Muhammad Dubuari anymore. Now they are not calling him out for bankrupting Nigeria. A lot of people are saying that, hey, APC upon APC, handing over to APC is still equal to APC. Now, I just want you guys to listen to this particular video on how the APC are accusing their own APC former president, the incumbent, uh, Muhammadu Buhari, for bankrupting Nigeria. How in a benzo shop, squandu, Nigeria money. Let's watch this particular video. We'll be right back. I'll talk about President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Saudi Arabia right now when on Monday he said that his administration inherited serious liabilities but also assets from previous uh, administrations. Uh, Tinubu made that comment after a meeting with uh, uh, Vice President uh, Country Programs in Saudi Arabia of the uh, Islamic uh, Development Bank as he advanced uh, negotiations concerning a, a multi-billion dollar infrastructure uh, finance facility from the Islamic uh, Development Bank. He said that these assets will fund a multi-sectorial portfolio of infrastructural projects uh, at the federal and sub-national uh, levels in Nigeria. Uh, well, according to the president's special advisor, Ajuri Ngilale, the meeting was held after Tinubu returned from an evening prayer in Mecca. Well, this is also as the national security advisor, Nuhu Ribadu, in the same vein, attributed current economic instability to the country's challenges inherited from President uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari, stating that the current president, Tinubu, uh, inherited the treasury when he an empty treasury, actually, when he came into uh, power. Well, uh, I, I think we have a, a video of Ribadu making those statements. I believe he made that on Monday when he was commending the armed forces, uh, you know, despite a limited uh, budget. Let's quickly uh, take a listen to Nehu Ribadu uh, before we uh, take some tweets, if we can. I assure you that the federal government of Nigeria will not rest on its own uh, in ensuring a robust and viable defense management and security apparatus to address contemporary challenges, even in the face of enormous budgetary constraints. And yes, we are facing serious budgetary constraints. It's, it's okay for me to tell you, and it's fine for you to know, that we have inherited a very difficult situation. Literally a bankrupt country. No money. To a point where we could say, even the earnings that we are going to we are getting now, we are paying back what was taken. It's serious. But this administration is doing its best to meet our requirements. Anyway, it did it end there. I also want you guys to watch this particular video of Arise TV News on how this man make breakdowns of everything that is happening in your country. How there are misappropriates of funds and how people took advantage of powers and the things that are going on in your country that you personally don't know. Let's watch this particular video together. We'll be right back to do some messages to it. Well, justification, I don't know, in the sense that um, there was already a budget this year for these departments. So why do all these people need a supplementary budget at this time of the year, which is like, what, two months to the end of the year? Yeah. Um, if we had to be realistic... Um, or is it that they're just grappling with it because a new administration came in in May? Uh, so you come in and then you, you are going to the assembly to approve a budget for you for this amount of money and there's only two months left in the year. Um, what is so urgent? And you know, why, don't, why isn't the emphasis on preparing the budget for next year and make the adjustments? Or is it that you have drawn down on ways and means 
and then you are now coming to seek approval for this budgetary expenditure to cover um, your spending. Um, so it's, for me, the timing is a bit difficult for me to comprehend. So justification is a different thing, and I think that's why you've seen the public outcry in terms of, you know, the optics. You know, optics is very important, you know, in, because people, we have 130 million Nigerians in multidimensional poverty. So a lot of these things become very insensitive, and, you know, you really need to manage the optics, you know, otherwise you see the outcry that we've been seeing. Um, so, the, you know, while you can talk about justification, the question is that two months to the end of the year, um, you know, and then how have you financed this? Have, has this been money that has been spent? Uh, so, um, well, so that's where we have the challenges. My own focus is seeing what next year's budget is going to look like. But one, it is very bad. For the Naira is going to 2,000. You see, let's not deceive ourselves. That's why I had to call a spade a spade this morning. After government borrows all this money and we defend the economy and the currency a bit, what happens after we don't have more money? I hope we know that most of these borrowings are against future sales of crude oil. So one way or the other, we are going through a turmoil. This 50 something billion could have stayed back in Nigeria, but they want to fritter it abroad while they can share it among Innocent and some other local brands and Nord and the likes. The other part of the argument is where is the sense of national pride? Absolutely. Have you ever seen an American president? And this even goes to the presidency. The president's official car must be Nigerian made if we are serious in this country. Have you ever seen an American president drive a Japanese brand? So the president is corporate. The president drives a German brand. Let's start from the president. They can make specific cars. Because you see, when Pojo Automobile had that deal with the Nigerian government, all government cars were Pojo Automobile. This same incumbent president, when he became governor in 1999, his official car was Pojo Automobile. It was because the Nigerian government had a deal with Pojo Automobile there in the 70s. So let's start from the president. He too must drive Nigerian made cars. And we must cascade it across all the ministry to be able to boost the auto sector. They also told another lie. To be able to debunk all the argument, they also told another lie. That they, they want to buy durable cars so that in the next four years, that's not true. <laughs> what do you think about this new development and how they accuse presidents or ex-president? I keep on calling him president. Ex-president Muhammadu Buhari for embezzlement and misappropriate of funds for bankrupting Nigerians. I want to hear from you the conversation. What are your take? Do you think that man deserves to be arrested? Do you think that man is not just deserve to be arrested, to be put in jail for what it did to Nigeria and how it destroyed the Nigeria hope and future? So let's talk about his last year in office. Just one month before leaving office, how it took 800 million US dollars. How can that the Ganeshi order against us? 800 million US dollars? How do you, how do you survive from it? How? Who are those responsible for this? Who are those responsible for this? That a territory that no project every have abandoned that the garage of 800 million US dollars. You know what they're talking about? How do you survive it? And also, that same one year before leaving office, he also took 14 billion to repent Asso Rock. The same Asso Rock that he said he spent 14 billion on, that's the same Asso Rock uh, Tinibu is requesting over billions to refurnish now. Just within one year now, these two guys. Buhari claimed that he used another 24 billion to build hospitals in Asso Rock. And President Mohamed Buhari has approved 21 billion naira for the construction of, and also equipping of a 14-bed presidential clinic. State House Permanent Secretary Umar Tijani made, the, uh, made this known when he appeared before the Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs to present his 2022 budget proposal in December 2022. Just between the space, which is 24 billion to build a small hospital in Asso Rock, plus 14 billion spent into paints Asso Rock, plus 800 million. He said it's for, uh, it's for palliative. 
the palliative, I don't know if any of you benefit from it. I don't know. But that is what it is right now. Your former president bankrupt your country. In all of this, the judiciary is not helping matters. According to Mr. Kalu Kalu, he said that Nigeria don't have hope on the judiciary anymore. It is not all about uh, who is right, who is wrong. It is all about who has the highest connection ever since the APC took over power. So everybody is giving up on judicial. And this is what Mr. Kalu, Kalu has to say during a Rice TV News uh, interview. The judiciary is not even helping matters. Look at the kind of judgments that we have today. Inconsistent judgments from the same facts, the same law, and circumstances. In, in, in one breath, the, 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 the judges will say, you are, you are qualified to run. In another, in another breath, they say, you are not qualified to run. So who will not have confidence in judiciary again in this country? Frankly speaking, is the is the umpire, not the politicians, not the, 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 the electorate. What we have today, let's say the truth, is indicted national electoral criminals. That's INEC. That's what we have today in Nigeria. From 1999 to date, we've had cases of electoral malpractices. Let me jump in here, Carlo. Uh, let, let's be, let's be uh, the cause uh, in our language. Uh, we, we quite understand you, you can make your point without uh, trying to malign any acronym or institution. Uh, it's Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Today, that's not what they are. We must say what, it, what they are today. So Nigerians, we know what the, the institution they are dealing with. You cannot, after everybody, even the, even the uh, uh, European Union, after the election, gave their report and indicted INEC. And after that, INEC spent billions of naira in the 2023 election. And everybody, all the institutions, all the, all the, all the, all the, all the electoral observers, with, with local and, 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 and foreign, condemned what happened in the election. And we thought, with the off-season election, that they were going to make an improvement. But what happened was even worse than what happened in, at, the, at, the, at the election, in the 20, in 2023 election, general election. And you said we should not say it the way it is. When we can't say it the way it is, then the, the anomaly yeah, will continue. First, it's a terrible time to be a lawyer, terrible time for the judiciary. I mean, too many things happen at the same time. So um, the image is not good, the perception is not good. I'm sure when we're going to rec chronicle this period, we'll say we've seen this kind of anomaly. I remember as a young lawyer, with Chief Gani following me, that this uh, happened once. With the, in fact, more grievous, when the court of the Supreme Court in this case gave two different judgments, and Chief Gani took it up, and the Supreme Court had to come back to do some kind of formal clarification, maybe had a nice proceeding. Now, the first thing to do is to say, look, I saw, I read that to those areas about okay. twice. They were different, they conveyed a different sense that the appeal, you know, the appeal succeeds, whereas the appeal didn't succeed. Uh, clerical error typically would be things like what happened in the case of Abga and um, Njoko and um, uh, Abga chairman. We are so um, what do you guys think about these issues? issue? So I want to hear from you the conversation. Until we meet again, stay tuned. We plan B TV. We love you. Remember, God love you more. Peace out. Everybody make you wake up to plan B TV. Give you the news as in the heart of you. Subscribe and give them your thumbs up. And then go give you the updates. And the new blocks in the town. Now they go give you the gist though. Now they go give you all the news. Cause it's kind of weather you need all the fun. Oh. I said, now nah, who they is on the Plan B TV? Plan B TV. I said, now nah, who they is on the Plan B TV? Plan B TV. Plan B TV, 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 Pl